What is up, everybody? Today, I wanted to talk about why I think AI code analysis is so important and why I'm convinced this is the future of static code analysis. So here, um, we just built and launched a new version of the website. This video isn't about that, but just to talk briefly about what this architecture is, is the front end is Vue.js and the back end is an API. So you can see whenever I click a button or do some sorting, it's running API calls to the back end and fetching some data. And so this is the standard sort of way that most web apps are built these days because you can ship changes to a front end and have a logical way to separate the back end. One of the most prevalent issues with this kind of architecture is authentication because you have a decoupled front end from the back end. And so if you're not running checks on every time that you do one of these things, you can see one of the headers it sends is my authorization header. This is my JSON web token, um, which could be a whole video on its own. But basically, there are a lot of issues about validating this, signing this, optionally encrypting it, how to understand it, how to make sure it's being used properly. And you don't get these as much with monolithic architectures because the authentication is tied so much more closely to the way that the HTML is generated. And so in my experience, these kinds of applications have really struggled with static code analysis. And so to give an example, before we get into why I think AI code analysis is so impactful and so important, I ran a open grep scan on this repo just to get an idea of the kinds of stuff that it finds and why these tools are generally super noisy. So I've scanned with a lot of vendors who use open grep and something to, that's important about open grep is the rules are not open source. And so everybody sort of has their own little ways of tuning rules, adding additional ones, removing some. Um, and so none of them showed all 25 of these findings because they know that they're very noisy. So the first is, I'm not gonna go through each and every one of these, but you'll see a lot of issues um, with this uh, VHTML usage because I'm using a CMS that's just injecting HTML directly into the page, which if it wasn't from a trusted source would be really bad. But since it's from a trusted source, it's not as big of a deal. Um, another issue you'll see is that I did a transfer of my existing blogs from Substack onto the new website. And some of these links point to HTTP rather than HTTPS links. And every single time this happens and it's discovered in this repo, that's first of all, not used anywhere in the application. Second of all, was a one-time migration script. Third of all, is not that big of a deal in the first place. These all get flagged as issues and alongside it, the entire blog post. And so Basically, um, if you're like me, you are probably pretty burnt on static code analysis because there are so many false positives. You need to do a ton of tuning to make it more usable. And there are just a lot of issues that come up along the way. And it's all almost irrelevant. And the big difference and why I wanted to highlight zero path is they have this whole separate section here for logic vulnerabilities. And these types of vulnerabilities have been just the bane of my existence to ever try to find, and yet they're the most critical to find in any environment. And so these kind of logic vulnerabilities, typically this is what you get a pen test for, right? Is the pen test exists to tell you like, hey, I was able to access uh, this kind of data that I'm not supposed to access. And normally you need a human context to tell that, right? For example, um, there are some paid features on the Latio site, right? Like to access a report, if you're logged in as a paid user, this is get the report and you get taken straight to the report to download it. Um, but how would I tell uh, if I had access to this or not, if I wasn't a paid user? This is categorically the sorts of security features that uh, static code analysis on its own can't tell you. Same with if I was able to get access to data that I shouldn't have access to from doing com security comparisons or to give an example of a real issue, the AI search has access to a lot of elevated functionalities um, that allow it to look up things like different tools, different pieces. And so here you can see it's like looking up data from the back end uh, to respond to the user's request. And there's a lot of potential security issues here where what if that's data that um, an end user is not supposed to have access to? So all this to say that these sorts of logic vulnerabilities tend to be the most impactful as well as honestly the most common. Um, and yet really there's no aspect of code analysis that's ever been able to detect these. So if you look at my graph of... Uh, the aspects of scanning that make up an ASPM, right? You have like managing the SDLC, you have managing third-party vulnerabilities, secret, SAS, IC, container, DAS, CSPM. Uh, just categorically, none of these tools detect these sorts of issues. The closest other thing has been API security tools um, can sometimes look at patterns in authentication flow. So it can say users with jots that look like this tend to access these sorts of data, but that's really as close as we've been able to get. But I just want to show just a few of these examples, right? Uh, and this is from an earlier scan. These are issues that I've actually been able to detect in my app. 
this is, I have this concept of category, subcategories for tools. And so when I was doing the sort earlier, you can see, right, if I go to ADR, there's eBPF function level, network, and raspy, so that you can get an idea of like how different tools work under the hood. And you have these subcategories. And at one point, I had forgotten to attach the authentication middleware to that endpoint to delete subcategories. And what this means is that anyone would have been able to make an API call to this endpoint and delete it. And you can see here, zero pass telling me it's no longer detected. But like this would have been a major issue, right? Like someone could have gone in and just totally cleared out major sections of the site, caused me to do a database rollback, all sorts of just uh, problematic issues that would have been something that no other analysis tool would have caught. And you could see a ton of these different ones, whether it's using hard-coded DB credentials in this migration script, which is something that AI loves to do if it's running like a one-off script, we'll go ahead and just hard code those bad boys in there. Different sanitizer bypasses, different PII leakage. And so here was another example where uh, the site has a concept of leaving user reviews. And on those user reviews, there was a point in time when I was gonna have the user's data as part of the response. And so you could see the actual person that left the review. I decided to remove that feature, but I didn't take it out of the backend API. And so the backend would fetch the user review data and actually include everything I have about it, which includes like the pr proof of ownership, the number of employees, the pricing details if they shared them, and different, most importantly, the user ID and user email of the person who submitted it. So these are the kinds of issues that are really common that tend to get missed because like, this isn't like a static analysis tool. The tool has no ability to know whether or not you want this data returned or not. And so this is where I think, first of all, uh, these types of tools have become my new default for scanning things. When I need to actually trust the security of what I'm deploying, I go straight to these AI enabled tools because of their ability to find these logic findings that are so much more interesting than anything else. And just to talk about the other side of this is both the complexity of traditional SaaS issues. So you'll see in here, some of these are the same issues that came up via open grep. But then there's this additional issue that requires knowing a little bit of how the flow across my application works. So here, the AI analysis tool, um, when you do the, the lookup, could actually reflect uh, stored JavaScript back out of it, which is the kind of issue that you normally wouldn't catch. But here, because it's doing this analysis of the call graph across the application, combining with the contextual analysis to know that like this is an AI tool that's user facing, can determine like these types of static analysis issues. The other area where this is super helpful um, is when it comes to this concept of reachability that I've talked a lot about. And what's complicated about reachability, I can actually pull up a graph. Reachability is essentially a way of trying to determine if a vulnerability is exploitable within your environment. And here you can see I've tried to map out, uh, I won't fully explain all of this because it's somewhat complicated, but there's trying to get all of this runtime data loaded into the static analysis to determine is this a true or false positive. To give a simple example for my application, I have a migrate substack script that was used for that one-off migration. Obviously, that doesn't run every time the application's built. And so if I had runtime reachability, it would say, hey, this file, like none of this file, none of these functions, none of the libraries associated with it actually execute at runtime. And so you can ignore all of the vulnerability findings that are with it. What's complicated is that every vulnerability is so special in terms of how it's exploited and how it's used that it can oftentimes be really specific to the vulnerability. And here's where AI is able to do an incredible job where it's able to see even for this random example where there is a vulnerability within a library I'm using as an HTTP client, it's saying how I'm using the library. And then it's saying that the application server is fast API. And so I don't, I'm not using it server side. Therefore, since it's a server side parser, it's never executed. And what I want to highlight is there are ways that people can get to this outcome via traditional methodology, but the flexibility of this for tuning out false positives is actually extremely powerful. And so this is why I'm just absolutely convinced, like I'm not a big AI is taking over the world. Oh, AI is the coolest thing ever for everything all the time. But contextually, I think it's extremely powerful. All of these examples are why when I need to verify the legitimacy of an issue, like this is the kind of tool that I want because the AI analysis is just so incredibly powerful for it. Just to give one more example, because I love talking about this stuff from another test application I have. This is more of like a social media application where people can comment and delete different cat picture feedback. And the reason that this finding is so important, like again, no other tool, like this is a brand new capability for tools to even find vulnerabilities like this. Um, no other tool has found this issue because it is contextual to the application. 
where there's a delete comment endpoint and that endpoint doesn't do any user validation. And so this would allow uh, unauthenticated a user to just totally delete wide swaths of the application. And here, ZeroPath was able to find it because of the way that the application is looking both at traditional static issues, but also looking at these logic issues that generally present way larger attack surfaces and tend to be the issues that are really hard to spot and really hard to enforce later on. So all that to say, I think AI enabled scan tooling is absolutely essential for the future of what scanning options are out there. I'm super excited about it. This is why I think OpenAI and Anthropic are working on their own versions of uh, some of this stuff. This is why I'm a huge fan of tools like ZeroPath. And if you want to see others, I have a AI SAST filter here to show the different tools that are using it. But this is the area of application security that I am the most excited about from a detection standpoint by far.